Introduction to Applied Linguistics, Lecture 1, Introduction. The British Association of Applied Linguistics was, was formally established with the following aims. The advancements of education by fostering and promoting by any lawful charitable means the study of language use, language acquisition and language teaching and the fostering of interdisciplinary collaboration in this study. Applied linguistic is an interdisciplinary field of study that identifies, investigates and offers solution to ling language related real life problems. Some of the academic fields related to applied linguistics are education, linguistics, psychology, anthropology, and sociology. The role of applied linguistics concerned with solving or at least ameliorating social problems involving language, a response to the narrowing of focus in linguistics with the advent in the late 1950s of generative linguistics has always maintained a socially accountable role demonstrated by its central interest in language problems. For the most part, those who write about applied linguistics accept that the label applied linguistics refers to language teaching in its widest interpretation, therefore including speech therapy, translations, and interpreting studies, language planning. One important source of that enrichment has been the journal Language Learning, published from the University of Michigan, providing a chronicle of the development of applied linguistics over the past 50 years. The Corder was well aware that in limiting the coverage of applied linguistics to language teaching, he was open to criticize. There are voices suggesting that applied linguistics can fulfill a role wider than language teaching. Definitions of applied linguistics The theoretical and empirical investigation of real-world problems in which language is central issue. Applied linguistic is using what we know about language, how it is learned and how it is used in order to achieve some purpose or solve some problems in the real world. The focus of applied linguistics is on trying to resolve language-based problems that people encounter in the real world, whether they be learners, teachers, supervisors, academics, lawyers, service providers, those who need social pro services, test takers, policy developers, dictionary makers, translators, or a whole range of business clients. Kaplan suggests that applied linguistics are likely to move towards the analysis of new date, data rather than continue to argue new theory. The domain of applied linguistics, first and second language acquisition, language pedagogy, bilingualism and multilingualism, computer-mediated communication, conversation analysis, contrastive linguistics, language assessment, literacy, discourse analysis, lexicography, language planning and policies, pragmatics, foreign linguistics and translation. Some common questions. How can language be best learned and taught? What social factors affect language learning? How can technology be used to contribute to the effectiveness of language teaching learning? What are the related problems associated with language disorders? How can this be prevented? All 2010 conference topics. Language and it is acquisition, assessment, the brain, cognition, culture, ideology, instruction, interaction, listening, media, policy, reading, research, methodology, society, speaking, technology, translation, interpretation, writing. Applied linguistics, uh, literacy, speech, biology, deaf, education, interpreting, interpreting and translating, communication practices, lexicography, first language acquisition, Addership Identification Foreign Linguistics 
Language Learning and Teaching L2 Learning is a long and complex undertaking. L2 Learner struggles to break away from the confines of L1. An ideal L2 Learning involves the acquisition of a new language, a new culture, a new way of thinking, feeling and acting. Successful L2 Learning requires to total commitment, total involvement, total physical, intellectual and emotional response. L2 learning variables which affect the process of L2 teaching and learning. These variables are the answers to the following question. Who? Who does the learning? Who has the learners and where do they come from? What are their native languages? What are their levels of education? What are their socioeconomic levels? Who are their parents? What are their intellectual ca capacities? What sort of personalities do they have? Who does the teaching? What is his native language? How much knowledge does he or she have of L2 and it is culture? How is he, she is a person? What? What must be taught and learned? What is the communication? What is language? What do we mean when we say someone knows a language? What is the difference between L1 and L2? How much descriptive knowledge of L1 and L2 systems is L2 teacher required to have? How? How does learning take place? How can we ensure L2 learning success? What cog cognitive processes are used in L2 learning. What strategies does the learners use? What is the optimal cognitive, affective and physical domains for the successful learners? When? When does L2 learning take place? We know about observations that children are better language learners than adults. If so, why? Where? Where is L2 learning taking place? Has it been learned within the culture and linguistics milieu of L2 or not? What are the sociopolitical conditions of a particular country and how might that affect the learning process? How do interact, intercultural contrast and similarities impact L2 learning process? Why? Why learn a second language? What is the learner's purpose? Is he or she motivated by the prospects of a successful career by passing a foreign language requirement or by wishing to identify with the culture and people of the target language? L2 Learning Answers to these questions and other help us understand better the process of language teaching and learning and the variation in the levels of achie achievement among L2 learners. In order to answer these questions, we must delimit and define the following three concepts, terms, which are going to be the focus of inquiry. One, language. Second, learning. Third, teaching. What is language? Language is a system of arbitrary vocal symbols. These symbols have conventionalized meanings. Language is used for communication. Language is used in a community with culture. Language is a human social phenomenon. Language is acquired the same way universally. Language has universal characteristics. The simplicity of the previous statements about language should not be allowed to mask the sophistication of linguist research. A study of the following categories is suggested for us through understanding of language, explicate and formal accounts of the system of language and several levels of analysis, mainly phonological, morphological, synthetic and semantic. The symbolic nature of language, relationship between language and reality, philosophy and of language, history of language, writing system, uh, proxemicus language and cognition, Psychologist, sociologist, language and culture, bilingualism, first and second language acquisition, language universal. What should language teachers know? Components of language, relationship between language and cognition, writing system, nonverbal com communication, 
Social Linguistics First Language Acquisition. Learning is acquiring knowledge of, of a subject, skill by study, experience, or instruction. Learning is involves acquisition or getting retention of information or skill, relatively permanent but subject to forgetting, a change in behavior, active, conscious, focus on and acting upon events outside or inside the organism. Some form of practice, perhaps reinforced practice. Teaching is guiding and facilitating learning, enabling the learner to learn, setting the conditions for learning, reinforcing practice. Language teaching methodology. Language teaching is not easily categorized into methods and trends. Each teacher should try and develop a sound overall approach to various language classrooms. There are no instant recipes. Every learner is unique. Every teacher is unique. Every teacher-learner relationship is unique. Every context is unique. A language teacher can build a theory based on principles of second language teaching and learning using an eclectic approach. Applied linguistics is an ethical profession. In law, like strong professions such as medicine and law, applied linguistics, and other weak professions like sanction, as such, they don't control entry nor do they oversee continuing membership or license members to practice as professionals. However, what they can do is create an ethical milieu. And in this way, exercise informal control, they can establish a professional association, mount training, courses leading to degrees and certificates. They can organize internal discussions, hold conferences and annual meetings of the National Association and provide regular publication, such as Applied Linguistics, the International Review of Applied Linguistics, the Annual Review of Applied Linguistics, the International Journal of Applied Linguistics. In this way, the, in Applied Linguistics, consensus can be achieved on what is required to become professional Applied Linguistics. What is more, a weak profession can develop an ethical framework such as to be found in a code of conduct or a code of ethics. Increasingly, professions have laid claim to their own professional status by demonstrating their concern to be ethical. Indeed, house claims ethical or the rules or standards or right conduct or practice, especially the standard of a profession, has made clear it is our commitment to be ethical by publishing is draft recommendations on a good practice in applied linguistics. Cohen considers that what characterizes a profession is that it serves clients rather than makes a customer type contract. Was a professional offers a service or duty to be professional to act professionally rather than to be successful, since success cannot be guaranteed. The distinction of linguistics applied and applied linguistics. We do some present the question in terms of linguistics applied and applied linguistics. The difference between this models of intervention is that in the case of linguistics applied, the assumption is that the problem can be reformulated by the direct and analytical application of concepts and terms deriving from linguistics inquiry itself. That is to say, language problems are amenable to linguistic solution. In the case of applied linguistics, intervention is crucially a matter of mediation. Applied linguistics has to relate and reconcile different respirations of reality, including that of linguistics without excluding others.